it is time for the obligatory YouTube end of year recap for 2023. It is December 31st, the last day of the year, and I am brewing one final batch of 13 degree tamave. Shit, I almost dropped my phone. <laughs> so while my tank is sanitizing, I am going to give you a recap on the highlights of 2023 and briefly dive into some goals for 2024. So check it out. So first things first, let's recap what happened in the beer space and then we'll move on to other things that are happening in Tanglefoot's world. Well, the most important and probably the most disappointing thing to happen in 2023 is, I have to dump all my beer. Yeah, and I made a whole video about this, so if you're interested in it, go check it out on the channel. But I had to dump all of the beer that I produced in the last few months because of a yeast contamination, and that's a big bummer to end the year on. But let's move past that, on to positive stuff. Since officially incorporating as an LLC in early 2023, I started the business Tanglefoot Brewing under my name after transitioning it from the barbecue restaurant, and here are some of the highlights that happened. First of all, I made beer and sold it to the public as an actual business. That's pretty cool. It's something that I lose sight of often when I get in the uh, kind of the depths of madness here at Tanglefoot, when things aren't going too well and I get a little upset. It's easy to overlook that that's pretty fucking cool. I made beer that people liked and I sold it to them. Yeah, that's fun. So any of you that are looking to start a brewery or work in a brewery or homebrew and love making beer, that is one thing that is truly amazing about doing this as a profession is that I got to create a beer and sell it to somebody for money that they gave to me. Very cool. Another thing that I thought was very cool about 2023 was I sold six packs and quite a lot of them, almost 800 to be exact, along with some 22 degree tamave cans and some other things here and there, including growler fills. I dedicated a lot more beer to to go. And while that isn't great for the top line revenue, it was really nice to see people come in after work and pick up a six pack and take it home to enjoy and or share. On top of that, another thing that was really cool was that I implemented a screen printing operation at my house. This technically happened late last year, but for this year in 2023 of being in operations under my own entity, I sold about 130 pieces of merch, specifically t-shirts and hoodies that I screen printed myself. So it's not a ton of merch, but it was really cool to control that in-house and not have to carry a bunch of inventory. And even though I do screen print these on demand in small batch quantities, I still do end up carrying some inventory. So that's just the uh, nature of selling merchandise. And finally, I ended up sending out some beer into distribution, which was a big milestone that I wasn't sure that I was ready to achieve, but ended up making happen. And while I only distributed 10 kegs due to my limited availability of beer, I have one account, Troy Lumberyard, in Troy, that has had the beer on tap since I started distribution, and that's a really cool feeling. They're the only account that carries my beer continuously, and they've been an awesome customer, not to mention the people there are great folks. Oh, and this year I only brewed about 50 barrels of beer, but had to dump some of that due to the infection, so not a huge amount of production, but it is slowly growing, and that is positive. All right, so now let's talk about the brewery itself. So I had some obvious yeast contamination issues, but outside of that, I had a couple of hiccups in the production of beer throughout the year, and I wanted to highlight a few of those things. One, the heat exchanger was a, a high probable cause of where the infection came from, and so cleaning, that has been a challenge. Uh, so in 2024, I'm looking at getting a new heat exchanger. Second piece of equipment, that has not been ideal has been my carbonation method. So unfortunately, I don't have a huge budget to spend on uh, different equipment. And specifically, I cannot afford to buy a proper carbonation tester. So I end up just setting my carbonation stone at a certain flow rate and just timing it. Now this produces pretty consistent results, but it still doesn't allow me to slightly tweak the beer to exactly where I want it to be. So what ends up happening is I finish carbonating on the draft system, or at least I get the beer to the final proper carbonation level by having it passively sit on CO2 in the kegerator. And last but certainly not least, the biggest problem in my brewing setup is my cold liquor tank and the cooling of the wort in order to knock out. Um, that is compounded with my glycol chiller not being large enough to handle the extra heat load. So what ends up happening is I have to 
knock out at a warmer temperature and then let the tank cool the beer down to the 50 degree pitching temperature, which just adds a lot of extra time. And during the summer months, it just becomes a huge pain in the ass. Um, I can't consistently keep temperatures that I want to maintain in the brewery during the summer because it gets so hot back there. And again, my glycol chiller is undersized. Now this is something that I really want to change, but again, everything that needs to be upgraded in the system costs several thousands of dollars. So I'm not sure what the timeline looks like for me to upgrade that, but it is something that is on the forefront of my mind. So enough about beer talk. Let's talk about YouTube, specifically you folks that are watching the channel. First, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that watches these videos. I spend a moderate amount of time making them. It's not too much, but I do put a lot of work into it and try to document the process as best I can. Granted, I get kind of lost in the shuffle sometimes and I forget to post videos on a consistent basis, but I do think about making YouTube videos constantly and I really appreciate anybody that has engaged with the channel or watched any of the videos. Uh, it means a lot and hopefully y'all are getting some value out of this because that's why I wanted to start the channel in the first place, to document the growth of a small brewery. So here are a couple of highlights from the YouTube channel within the last year. I have about 1,600 subscribers as of the time of recording this video, which is really cool. I don't know what I expected when I started the channel, but the 1,600 subscribers feels like a huge milestone within the first year of making YouTube. Uh, technically, the channel's been going on for longer than that, but 2023 has been where the primary growth of the channel has happened. So thank you to all the subscribers. And because I got over 1,000 subscribers, I was able to monetize the channel. And as of today, I have received one payment from YouTube of $111 in AdSense revenue. No big deal, might spend that on some golf or something, who knows. And while I was never really looking to get brand sponsorships, I did end up getting one sponsored video from Inkbird. That's where I showed you how I built my first brewery setup, as well as receiving a pH meter from Eric Hill, which is super dope, that I will be reviewing and talking about in a video coming soon. YouTube has been extremely fun to do and I've always wanted to make videos. So thank you again for everybody that's watched and I will continue to put out as many engaging videos as I can. Other notable things at Tanglefoot, I got a ride up in Texas highways that was pretty cool. We also got mentioned in a Washington Post article from the same writer as the article in Texas highways that both talked about the lucre taps and the check logger focused brewery that we're running here. So that was a highlight of the year for sure. And our beer was mentioned on a podcast called The Beerus, and I've gotten pretty favorable reviews on Untapped, even though I'm just a tiny brewery here in Temple, Texas. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I bought a keg washer. Got this used from my friends over at the Brewtorium in Austin, Texas, and uh, had it for a couple of months, but just haven't done a video on it yet, so stay tuned for that. So now let's talk about 2024. So my goals with this business were to start a small brewery in Temple, Texas to brew easy drinking, balanced beers that were of high quality that could be kind of the go-to lager in Temple, Texas. Over the last year and a half of running this business, I had become increasingly more interested in running a successful, profitable business. And this business model has proven to be quite challenging. Now, this super tiny scale is obviously never gonna make a ton of money because my production is limited to about 100 barrels of beer a year, and that's just not a ton of beer any way you slice it. So looking forward to 2024, I anticipate one, growing production by some means, either introducing new tanks, getting more kegs to be able to lager more beer in kegs and moving more beer through the system more quickly, and generally just squeezing out as much beer from the system as I possibly can. Now the tap room business does seem to be growing, but it is at a slow rate. So I am also going to be putting more money into marketing the brewery. My intent is to get as many people into the tap room as possible on the limited hours that I'm gonna have moving into 24. Most likely gonna be Thursday, Friday, four to 8 p.m. at night, and Saturday, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'm reducing these hours because I have found that I just don't get a ton of business in the earlier hours of the day. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the nature of the beast. But I am going to try to get more people through the doors in those limited hours to sell as much beer over the counter as possible. On top of that, with trying to increase production, I do want to send out more kegs into the market. Now, I bounced this idea around ad nauseum in my head and really didn't want to dedicate much beer into the market because one, I can't brew a lot of beer, so there won't be a ton of revenue from it, and two, it's a much lower margin product than serving beer by the pint, but 
I've gotten to the point where I just want to sell as much beer as I can from the system. And if it proves to work out and there is demand in the market, then I could feel more comfortable justifying means to put tanks into the brewery and increase overall production. And finally, I do have some plans to make some really cool beer experiences going into 2024. Uh, I have a few video ideas that I'm already kind of scripting and bouncing around in my head. And so hopefully I'm gonna try to film some of those and release them and hopefully y'all enjoy them. So that is the year in review for 2023 and a few things that I'm looking forward to doing in 2024. My license to produce alcohol on this location ex expires in 2025 around March. So I have that as a timeline in my head that I need to get this shit together and make it work. Otherwise, I might be pivoting the model at that point and trying to figure out a way that isn't, you know, just being here on a daily basis bartending. So uh, hopefully I can figure out a way to make this work, but this is a challenging business to operate, but I'm trying to document it and give some insight to other people if this is helpful. So thank you again for watching the channel. Thank you for being engaged in my story and hopefully we will have some exciting news in 2024. Cheers.